Um, should I light some candles? Uh, why don't we wait until your daddy gets here? Right. Five minutes late in counting. He'll be here. So, what did he say when you talked to him on the phone? Actually, I left him a message. But he, uh... He knows how important this is that we all sit down as a family, so he'll be here. And if he wasn't going to make it, I know that he would have called and said that he couldn't be here. Uh, can I go upstairs and boot up that virtual thing I want to show him? Save it until after dinner, though, right? Save it till after dinner. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shane gets ten minutes on the computer, and then we're going to make ourselves scared. Sweetie, this Give is about... some time alone. All of us, okay? All of us. But mostly you kids. Especially since... Sweetheart, uh, I know what happened between you and that boy in the garage, and I can't believe I didn't know anything about it, or that I didn't somehow sense that you were going through that. I'm just glad that Olivia was there to protect you. Well, all she did was run the guy off. Anyone could have done it. No, sweetie, what she did was a very brave and a very wonderful thing, and you don't have to pretend that it wasn't. And it's all right if you want to like her. Well, I'd like her a lot more if Dad liked her a lot less. I was just thinking about the basics tonight. I wasn't even thinking about decorating at all. This is I great. I know, I know, but, but when I saw this in the window, it just kind of spoke to me, you know? It's a like, Josh, must have now, steal, <laughs> take it, run. It's a nice piece. It is. It is. Yeah. The shopkeeper had no idea what she had, Josh. This is 18th century, signed in pencil. It's worth at least five times what we paid for it. It's, it's, it's just going to make this place really yes. homemade, you know? And tonight, really special. <laughs> There's no messages here. I hope this thing is working. Uh, were you expecting a call? Uh, yeah, yeah. Reva was going to call me, you know. We were going to set up a time to uh, Reva, sit down with Reva the kids. Reva has your, your new number. Yeah, why? Uh, no reason. Okay. So, uh, so where are we gonna, where are we gonna hang this thing, huh? Oh, what? No, no, what was that? What, I erased something? How could it, you just moved in. Who has your number? We're coming to you live from the downtown courthouse for a special evening session of the Michelle Santos murder trial. Mrs. Santos, any reaction no. to your brother's testimony yes, yesterday? Leave us alone, please. Honey, I am so sorry. I have, I have messed things up terribly for you. It's okay. You know what? You're a good brother. I love you. Okay. And things are going to turn out, okay? Things are going to turn out all right. She's right. All we need to do is focus on what's happening right now. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's our turn, you know? Right? Yeah. Ross is going to start defense, and... We'll give the media plenty to talk about. Are you absolutely sure about this? No question at all. Thank you. Want me to get rid of him? No, I want you to stay right here. Right here. And be my bodyguard. You're kidding, right? You're not still worried that Carmen might pull something off? No, I am kidding. I'm kidding. She forgave me for that. Not that I wasn't worried when I started my car this morning. Look, Drew, I, I think that it's a good idea that we keep an eye out on Carmen. I think she's telling the truth this time. Yeah, I think that she honestly believes that what happened to Mick was an accident. Let's just move on, okay? Michelle, I just want you to know that I didn't want to testify about all that ugly mess with Mick. I know it hurt the case, and I'm very sorry, but you saw what happened up on that stand. The DA was pushing, pushing me to... you like the way they pushed Rick? What was uh, I supposed to do? Lie under oath? Somebody in this town set me up for murder, so I can't really exclude anyone from my suspect list, including you, especially you. I hope the day comes when you realize how hard this has been for me to watch you go through this, you and Danny. I'm doing Yeah, I hope that day comes, too. I just want you to have the life you deserve, Michelle. That's all I ever wanted. Hard 
Don't you believe that's the same Carmen, right? Yeah. I thought she was gonna, um... Well, let's just say she forgave me for Mick because of my dad. And I actually believe her. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Something in me tells me that, uh, she'd still like to lock me up and throw away the key. Well, that's not gonna happen, is it? Tonight, the court's gonna hear your side and everything's gonna change. Ross, can I talk to you for a second? Can everyone come back here? I'm sorry, I don't have any time. Jesse, uh, I need to know if you're okay with what we talked about earlier. It's not going to be easy, but your testimony is very important. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. You're going to be discussing your relationship with Michelle, and Drew's going to be in the courtroom. You're going to be able to do that? Yeah, I can do it for Michelle. All right, come on, kid. We're up to bat. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, huh? let's go get him. So, Olivia didn't tell me a lot of details about what went on, only that you were with this boy and that things got a little rough. Honey, we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No, no. It's okay, Mom. I... I was mad. I got a little crazy. So I told this guy I was 19 and... Well, he, like, asked me to go out. And when we got down to the parking garage, he... Well, he started to push things. He held me tight and he started to to grab at me. And I, I told him to stop, but he wouldn't. And he should have. He should have stopped the minute that I said no. At least that's what Olivia said. And she was absolutely right. And I've told you that same thing, too. Look, I don't see the point in going over and over this, okay? Sweetie, sometimes it helps to talk to someone that you can trust. I don't ever want you to hold back anything, Mara. You can tell me anything. I've always told you that. I said no. I tried to get away, but it was like... It was like I wasn't even a person. You know, he... He grabbed at my shirt and he tore it. And then he... No, he just wouldn't stop. No matter what I said or what I did, he wouldn't stop. And I was so scared. Mom, I was so scared. I know, so Hey. Had, had you ever seen this boy before? No. Have you seen him since? He stopped by company once and he wanted to talk. But he took off when he saw Dad. Okay, well, we're going to have to decide how we want to handle this, okay? okay? But maybe we should wait until your daddy gets here later. All right, we'll talk about it together. Just as long as you guys are here, that's all I want. I was thinking. No, no, no. Don't be thinking now. Don't... No, you, you can't change your mind. We almost got this it's thing going. perfect there. I'm, I'm thinking about Riva, actually. I, if you don't hear from her tomorrow, maybe you should call and set this dinner up. Yourself, you know. Well, thank you. I appreciate... Uh, That's good. Is that straight? Yeah. yeah okay. I appreciate that. And thank, thank you... Uh, Thank you for your concern and all that, for your understanding. Well, I know really how much you great. love your children, and, and, and I want this to work, you know. I want this to work for yeah. all of us. So... What do you think? I like it. I like it, too. And I like the person who found it for me. 
thinking, you know, this this uh, yeah. decorating thing has really just worn me down, and uh, uh, yeah, it's tough. We need a change of pace. Maybe we need to, you know, check out the bed, make sure I put it together properly. The bed. Yeah. 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 Okay, but before we do that, there's something I need to tell you. All right. I have always wanted to make up for that night that I cost you that government contract. You didn't, you didn't cost me anything. You rescued yeah. my daughter. Well, still, okay. I did some research, all right? I looked into a company that you'd worked for in the past, and I was all ready to pitch them this big new contract, and I found out the job wasn't going to happen. But I did find something that has to do with you. Um, here. Okay. This is my father's handwriting. This is, this is, uh, this is from H.B. Hey, hey, I, um, I got your message. Where, where is she? Oh, they took her downstairs for, for some more tests, but, uh, she should be back up in a little bit. Whatever this is, they are eventually going to figure this thing out, right? You know, Bill, I don't know. I mean, one minute she's coming out of this thing, she's actually talking, and the next minute she's, she's, she's asleep again. I don't know. What are the doctors saying? I don't know anything. They take her down for a bunch of tests. They come up with a bunch of silly explanations for me, but they don't know anything. There's got to be something, right? Some improvement? Anything? If anything, she's getting worse, Bill. Sorry. Look, she's tougher than this, right? I mean, she is going to stick this thing out. Yeah. Look, what we have to do here is keep the faith, man. Right? Yeah. Hey, Matt, come on. You built the house, right? You said if you did, she'd come back to us. And she did. Matt, come on, man. You know, it's funny, Bill. I, I come in here every day, and I play music for her, and I, I watch TV with her, and I read to her. I do her makeup. Brush her hair. I put this stuff on her. Thinking, you know, today's gonna be the day. Today, she's gonna come back to me. But she doesn't. And nobody can tell me why. I think we have some business to discuss. I don't have time, Edmund. Vanessa Reardon is being slowly poisoned by her husband, which means I don't think she'll be up any time soon to bail your lovely daughter-in-law out of the mess she's in. I think you have plenty of time. Can we talk about this tomorrow? You and I are supposed to be partners. Carmen, I think we have more important things to worry about than how many years your daughter-in-law spends in prison. For example, I'm trying to take over a country. Are you going to take it over tonight? I think you're forgetting just how much you're going to benefit from this personally. Yes, yes, I know, Edmund, I know. Good, then you should also know the certain conditions that have to be met. Right now, right this minute. Yes, right now, right this minute. So I want you to listen to me, Carmen. There's something you have to do. Be seated and state your full name. Blue. Jesse Blue. Mr. Blue, would you please tell us where you live? I live in a loft upstairs uh, Millennium Club. I work there, too. And where did you meet Michelle? I met her in Point Lester, outside of a garage where I used to live. You lived in the garage? And if it wasn't for Michelle, I'd still be living in that crummy neighborhood. Actually, if it wasn't for Michelle, I'd probably still be in jail. Objection, Your Honor. Witness is giving a narrative. Uh, which I believe speaks to character, Your Honor. Overruled. Just try to get to the point as quickly as possible. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, now, Jesse, why do you say that you would be in jail if not for Michelle Bauer? Well, I wasn't exactly a role model citizen. Could you please explain that? When I lived in Point Lester, the cops kind of knew me by name. They knew me a little too well. And I was a small-time crook, and I was heading into the big leagues. And that's when I met Michelle. And she was a good girl from a good family. I was actually used to girls running away from me that were like her. But she didn't. Why didn't she? She saw something good in me. Something that I didn't even know I had in me. Objection. What is the point of all this rambling? The point is, is I was a 21-year-old kid that didn't know how to read. 
Uh, Mr. Blue, I'm going to overrule the objection and allow you to continue, but please try and remember that you are here to answer questions, not respond to objections. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, Jesse, you said that you were 21 years old and you couldn't read. How does that relate to Michelle? Well, there was a judge that was ready to throw the book at me and she made a deal for me. Ah, what was the deal? The deal was either to take lessons with Michelle, learn how to read, or go to jail. And did you accept this deal? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna do anything to stay out of jail. I mean, I never thought anyone could teach me how to read. So I gave her a really hard time, you know, and I pushed her to the limit. And what do you mean by that? Well, I wouldn't show up often. I, I, I was always joking around. I, I knew that nobody could ever teach me how to read, you know, but she wouldn't let up on me. Even when I wanted to quit and go back to jail, I, I volunteered, she wouldn't let me. So what happened? I went back to that judge that was gonna throw the book at me and I read to him. I read Shakespeare. Me, Jesse Blue from Point Lester, read Shakespeare. And I couldn't have done it if it wasn't for Michelle. Now she is the best human being I have ever met. She is a good girl and she wouldn't give up on me. You know, and there is no possible way that she could have done this. Your There's Honor. just no way. I would stake Your my Honor. life on it. Uh, Your Honor, I have no further questions. Ms. Wolf, would you care to cross? I certainly would, Your Honor. Mr. Blue, Michelle Santos did a lot for you, didn't she? Yes. She so... changed my life. So you owe her a lot, don't you? Yes, you could say that. In fact, you owe her your testimony, don't you, Mr. Blue? Objection. I do not owe her my testimony, and I'm not lying, if that's what you're implying. I wasn't accusing you of lying, Mr. Blue. But, as you said yourself, Michelle made a big difference in your life. So, isn't it true that you would do or say almost anything to help her? Yeah. Almost anything. Wouldn't you do or say almost anything because you're in love with her? I didn't say that. Is it true or not? What does one thing have to do with the other? Are you in love with the defendant? Answer the question. <laughs> Would everyone please settle down so we can continue? So you had a close relationship with Michelle Santos. Is that correct? Yes. She taught you how to read. She kept you out of jail. She changed your life. Those are your words. Yes. So it's not surprising that you would fall in love with her after all these things she's done for you, is I it? I never said that I was in you love. You didn't with have to. Objections. Counsel is now asking questions and answering them as well. Sustained. Please refrain from editorializing. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You've testified that you met the defendant in Point Lester. Is that correct? Yes. And you've admitted that that isn't exactly the best side of town. What does this have to do with anything? Why was she there, Mr. Bloom? I know what you're getting at. I'm trying to get at the truth. Answer the question. Michelle lost her mother. And she was in Point Lester looking for the recipient of her mother's heart. The donor recipient. Did she find that person? That was me. This witch is doing it again. In other words, you're alive today because of the defendant's mother? You received her heart? Yes, that's correct. I imagine that that could create an intense personal bond between two people. Did you and Michelle discuss this a lot? Yes, we did. And in the process, did you become very close? Yes. In fact, so close, you were engaged to be married. Isn't that correct? That's correct. So this woman changed your life. Those are your words. Her mother's heart beats in your chest. You were engaged to be married. In fact, at one point, you loved the defendant enough to ask her to marry you. So isn't it true, considering all of this, that you would do anything to help Michelle Santos, including trying to get her off a murder charge? She didn't do it. Oh, you were there? You were there the night No, of the but murder? I know that she couldn't have done it. Oh, she couldn't do it because, what, she couldn't commit murder? It isn't in her? Well, you have to admit that she can kill. I mean, at least in the case of McSantos. Objection. References to that case, it's not admissible. Sustain. Watch it, Miss Wolf. Yes, Your Honor. 
All right, Mr. Bloom. Tell me this. If Michelle Santos believed that Ben Warren drugged her husband and tried to break up her marriage, wouldn't she take an action? I mean, isn't it a possibility that she could kill to protect her husband and her marriage? Objection, Your Honor. No further questions. Mr. Marler, would you like to redirect? Uh, yes, Your Honor. In all the time that you have known her, have you ever seen anything in Michelle Bauer's character that would lead you to believe that she was capable of murdering Ben Warren or anybody else? No. Thank you. Are you in love with Michelle? There was a time when I thought I was in love with her, and there was a time I thought I was going to marry her. But we were kids. We were young. And now? Michelle and I are close. But no, I am not in love with her. Actually, I feel very lucky to have found Drew Jacobs, which I am engaged to be married to her. I love her from the bottom of my heart. And Drew Jacobs is the daughter of the man that was killed. And she believes that Michelle is innocent. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. I'm going to ask the jury to disregard the last part of that answer. You may step down, Mr. Blue. Mr. Marler, are you ready to call your next witness? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The defense calls to the stand Dr. Peter Webster. Who's Dr. Webster? I don't know. I have no idea. Is that someone you work with? No, I never heard of him. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I can't believe you found this. The, the, that H.B. wrote it. It was attached to a fully executed copy of the contract of the job, the one you were meant to have. Well, it, it just never made it to my desk. I've never seen this before. Well, you did do the job, right? Oh, yeah. I remember the job. It was a nightmare. It was the first time I was fully in charge of a, of a construction project, and everything went wrong. It, there was a union strike. There was... <laughs> It was awful. I was in way over my head, and everybody knew that. I wasn't fooling anyone. It, it just... First time out of the gate, it was a rough one. I've never seen so many foul-ups and delays. Never seen so much go wrong on one job. You were the head of this whole mess, and all I could think is... I've never seen any man handle disaster better. You never lost your head. Never pretended to know something you didn't. And when you didn't punch out Gil Johnson after the fourth bad shipment of steel, that clinched it. I knew I made the right decision putting you in charge, son. I know I think I, I uh... I know you think I ride you too hard, that I don't notice how much you've accomplished, but I do notice. And I am proud of you. You showed yourself to be a real Lewis. H.B. You know, I almost feel like I know your father after reading that. What kind of relationship the two of you had. What a great family it must have been. possibly given me a, a, a better gift. Thank you. Mm. Guys have been looking at me differently since I was 12. I'd have to be blind not to notice. Sometimes it's nice, but sometimes... You know what jerks guys can be. <laughs> I do know that. Mara, this wasn't your fault, though. It's all right for you to get dressed up and feel great about the way you look. Even if you want to get up on a tabletop and dance, although that would be something I'd prefer never to see again, it doesn't mean that it's an open invitation for some boy. It's your body, and it's your decision, and no definitely means no. And the guy who did this to you was more than just a jerk. 
It was wrong what he did. It was very wrong. Who was it? Who did that to you? Oh, it doesn't I'm matter. Being too Shane, Paul. Shane, Shane. I'm okay. not kidding. Honey, Who is it? All right. I can't believe he was Laura, it? sweetie, maybe what you should hear is a family who loves you and wants to protect you. And Shane, young man, your daddy and I will take care of this, okay? Where is he anyway? Uh, I should probably call him. Find out what's keeping him. <laughs> hey, you know what? I was just thinking, I, uh... I have another toolbox in the car. I need some more tools? stuff out of it, yes. So I'm going to run down there real quick. Uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be too long. Okay. Relax. Make yourself at home. Okay. Uh. Okay. Lewis residence. Is Josh there? Yes, he's, he's here. He went downstairs to pick something up. Do you want me to leave a message? No. I'll deliver that one myself. Did you find out what happened to Dad? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, he's gotten hung up. So, is he coming or not? Uh, can you guys do me a big favor and turn the oven down? Where are you going? I just, I, I just have to go out for a few minutes. Okay? What? Turn the oven down. How's, uh, how's my mom? Is there any change? Did you figure out why the medication's not working? I know, and it's and that's what's so odd. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to take this. Please excuse me. All right. You know, I thought this nightmare... I thought this nightmare was going to end. She was coming out of it, Bill. She was, she was talking. I mean, she wasn't completely coherent, but there was a connection there. There was something happening. I just wish I knew what it was that she was trying to say to me. I mean, she was, like, actually... Trying to say something. Yeah, I told specific. you. She kept saying I was there. Now I don't know what that means or if it's important or not. I was there. I just wish I could figure out what that meant. All right. Now I'm going to need you to talk to your people. What people? The people I just hired on for the Spalding project in San Cristobal. Why can't you contact them yourself? For the same reason you can't hand out lip balm. I need to be discreet. Okay, what's the order, and when do you need it? Carmen, I just told you what I needed. Now, can you handle this knot? And I told you I was going to hold up to my end of the bargain. Now, are, are we finished? Because I really must go. No, no, wait, all right, wait. I saw the expression on your face when you heard that Jacob's girl had been involved in your son's death. Oh. This would be a very bad time to do anything foolish. Don't worry, Edmund. I have a daughter in a convent who's talking to dead men, and I have a woman in a coma who's not dead enough. Now, if I really wanted to go after Drew, when would I have the time or energy? Don't worry. I can wait. I'm a patient woman. State your full name. Dr. Peter Webster. Doctor, would you be so kind as to tell us what it is you do and where you're employed? I'm a criminologist, and I currently work for Lyle and Betterman. And before that, you were a forensic pathologist, is that correct? Yes, I've handled over 5,000 autopsies, maybe more. And among your peers, you're one of the leading forensic scientists in the entire country, is that correct? Oh, I'd like to think so. And in that capacity, you recently conducted an independent study on the gloves, the gloves that were found in the defendant's drawer. Did you find anything unusual? Not at first glance. When I examined the gloves, they were completely consistent with the crime as alleged. I found the victim's blood as well as powder residue from the gun that killed Mr. Warren. Now that was at first glance. What did you find on closer look? I studied the police report of the murder very carefully. It stated that two shots were fired at the victim. But the powder residue on the gloves was only consistent with the firing of one shot. One shot? Well, are you saying that the killer fired a shot, paused, put down the gun, removed the gloves, picked up the gun, and with bare hands fired a second shot? Well, I suppose that's possible, but it doesn't make sense. I mean, obviously, the perpetrator wore the gloves to protect himself from leaving fingerprints on the gun. Yes. Why remove them? Yes. What other explanation could there be? There's only one. 
Mr. Warren was not shot by one person alone. Two people were involved. There were two shooters. Dr. Webster, the prosecution has clearly and repeatedly stated that Ben Warren was murdered by one person in the following scenario. A shot was fired. And Mr. Warren, wounded, crawled across the floor, whereupon he was shot a second time at close range. Now, this is what the district attorney said, and she said it could not possibly happen any other way. I know the prosecution's theory, but the fact is it just does not track with reality. Not when you examine the evidence. And in your expert examination of this evidence, whoever it is who wore the gloves fired one shot. And somebody else fired the other. And somebody else fired the other. Now then, with this in mind, it is certainly possible that my client did not fire that second shot, the shot that killed Ben Warren. Of course, absolutely. And in your expert opinion, this murder could not possibly have taken place the way the prosecution is describing it. Is that correct? That is correct. And, Doctor, that is what we call reasonable doubt, isn't it? Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to request a short recess. Very well. We'll reconvene in 15 minutes. Where did you find this guy? Why didn't you tell me about him? Uh, well, I found him, and I didn't want to get your hopes up. That was huge, Ross. Do you know how big that was? Good job. Thank you. I told you. I told you things were going to go our way. Nothing, nothing. I knew, I knew it. I knew everything was going to start looking up. How are you doing? What's wrong? Two people came after my father, Jesse, too. It's okay. We'll find them both, Drew. You're good, Mr. Marler. Maybe too good. But I cannot let you find that second shooter. I'm so sick of this whole mess. Dad totally blew this dinner off and he didn't even call. You don't know what happened. Sure I do. Think about it. Dad's with Olivia and, and Mom's running over there to cut his head off. Not like it's gonna help any. You don't know, you're only guessing. I can't believe this. Suddenly you're acting like you don't care what's going on. I care, but getting mad isn't gonna solve anything. Mom and Dad are always going to say how much they care about us and that they're always going to be there for us, but guess what? They're not. They're out doing their own things. So, what are you saying? What I'm saying is, is that we got to be there for each other. We got to count on us. You and me? That's right. <laughs> okay. So, what do you say we take care of each other on over to the Millennium? There's a great band playing there tonight. Wait, you want to take me to a club? Yeah. Can I even go to a club? Oh, Jesse, let us in. <laughs> Besides, I might need you there to protect me from one of those jerks. So? What are we waiting for? Let's, Let's go. go! All right, I'm gonna go get my coat. You I'm ready? write a note. <laughs> Now, this is great. You look great. It's just a little something I keep in my purse for those uh, unexpected moments. I like a woman who's prepared. <gasps> Appreciate a glass of wine, yes. A toast to um, your new home and to your new bed. I hope it's
it's up to the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess we better give it a test. Run. Well, you know, that's why I'm here. Because I want you to be as comfortable as you possibly can be. supposed to be at the house having dinner with the kids but I guess I see where your priorities are congratulations Michelle I feel like the case has been dismissed already well just keep saying that okay please keep saying that well it's a great job you returned this thing around I knew that we needed a forensic expert of our own to look at the evidence did you ever expect you come up with that though to be honest, no, no, I did not. I, I got very lucky. <laughs> Mr. Marley, can we ask you a few questions, please? Yeah, sure, Helen. Excuse me. Well, I'll tell you, when I saw Ross with that witness earlier, I just, I figured it was more bad news. Hey, stop thinking like that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that testimony was enough to create reasonable doubt. Know. You know that, don't you? I know, I know. I just, I hope, I hope nothing else happens. Like what? What do you mean? Um, <clears throat> where's your mother? How come she didn't stick around to congratulate us? She didn't? I think we can all agree that tonight was a huge victory for the defense. Uh, yes, but the victory I'm looking forward to is when the jury comes out of deliberations and declares my client not guilty. <coughs> Do you think they will? Oh, absolutely I do. My client is innocent. Prosecution hey, in any criminal right. case is Stop entitled time. to only one yeah, scenario. That's good news. Why don't you go see Michelle and see, uh, case see how she is? Has been cast into uh, absolute now I'm going to leave here and kiss Come on. Look, Peter if something Webster, happens, I'll call you. It's no big deal. Just give her my love. You sure? Yeah, get out here. Well, this certainly right. raises a hey. lot of questions. I'll Hang in there. Yeah, you too. The biggest one is... Who was there the night Ben Warren was murdered? Now, this new evidence suggests that two people were there besides the victim. But this case has come down to who was in that room when Ben Warren was murdered. Who was there? I was there. I was there. Impossible. Same night. Matt, what were you saying? I think, I think Vanessa might have been there the night Ben was murdered. I think she might know what happened. Coming soon on Guiding Light. Tony, it'll be a lot better for Michelle if Len does not testify. Yeah, what's going on with that? She told Jim that she's pregnant and that the baby is his. Guiding Light, 